To get you started building your Android apps, you should familiarize yourself with the different areas that the Android Studio IDE provides you. This is very important for you to properly navigate, manage, and become more productive in building your apps. Let's start by creating a new project, Empty Activity, and I'll name it Exploring Android Studio. If this is your first time working with Android Studio, the IDE can be sometimes overwhelming. The IDE is made up of several logical areas and today we're going to explore it one by one. First is the toolbar that lets you carry out a wide range of action including running your app and launching Android tools. The navigation bar helps you navigate through your project and open files for editing. It provides you with a more compact view of the structure of your project that is also available here in the project window. There are different file types that you will be working with here in Android Studio when developing your apps, but most often you'll typically work with a .kt file stands for Kotlin, this is your application code, and an XML file or your layout file to design your user interface. This area is what you call the editor window, where you create and modify code. And as you noticed, depending on the current file type that is active or currently selected, the editor's view can change. For example, when viewing a layout file, it displays the layout editor which consists of additional sub-windows for you to work with. If I select this area, where you can see a sample phone screen, you'll also see the attributes window that is populated with all the properties of the currently selected item. I can zoom in or zoom out on this layout by clicking the plus and minus button at the bottom portion of my layout editor. Notice that when I select on this text, which is what we call a text view component, different sets of attributes appear on the attributes window. Depending on what component you selected here, the attributes window changes as well. In your component tree window, where it provides you with a visual view of the hierarchy of your user interface design, you will see all the components that you currently have. In this case, we only have two, a constraint layout and a text view. Selecting an element from the component tree will cause the corresponding view in the layout to be selected as well. The palette window provides you with an easy access to the range of user controls or view components in the Android SDK. These are groups into categories for easy navigation. Items may be added to the layout by dragging a view component from the palette and dropping it at the desired position on the layout. I'm not gonna do that for now. The designer toolbar provides you with a quick access to a wide range of options like rotating the layout between portrait and landscape, changing the device model currently displayed, or switching to a different Android SDK API level. The mode switching tabs located along the upper right edge of the designer allow you to change view. You may want to design purely by using XML, then click this code view. Or you can choose a split view so you can see both the XML and the layout window. Notice that if you select a view component in your designer layout, the corresponding XML tag is also selected. Selecting this text view in my XML highlights the equivalent view component in my designer's view as well. We'll talk more on designing your app's user interface in the next video. Now, I'll go back to this project window and the one that you currently see here by default is so-called Android Project View. This view is organized by modules to provide you with a quick access to your project's key source files. Currently, we only have one. By default, Android's projects are handled by the Gradle build system. When you create a new project in Android Studio, the Gradle build scripts are automatically created. Android Studio provides the Gradle runtime, hence no additional installation is required. And when you press the run button in the Android Studio, it triggers the corresponding Gradle task and starts the application. We'll talk more on these Gradle files in some later videos as well. Each app module contains the following folders. The manifest folder contains the Android manifest.xml file. This file describes essential information about your app to the Android build tools, the Android operating system, and Google Play. The Java folder contains all the Java and Kotlin source code files which we create during the app development. This also includes other test files. 
The res or resource folder contains all non-code resources such as images, XML UI layouts, strings, colors, style, and dimension, categorized into subfolders namely drawable, layout, mipmap, and values. There are times that you'll have to open multiple files and this will be shown in your editor window. In our case, we only have two files open, the activity main.xml and the main activity.kt. And if you want to locate instantly the file currently showing in your editor window, for example, to locate this activity main.xml, all I need to do is to click this Select Open File button and this automatically locates the file for me. And it is placed under Res and then Layout Folder. Since you are currently on the Android project view, this allows you to see the flattened version of your project structure. However, this view does not reflect the project's actual structure in the disk. To see the actual file structure of your project, select Project from the Project Window drop-down list. And in here, you'll see additional hidden folders, the .gradle and the .idea folders that are not visible in the Android project view. And if I right-click on the project folder and select Show in Explorer, it opens my File Explorer in Windows and locates the project folder. Inside it, you'll see familiar file structure as shown in your project window. For example, if I drill down further to App, Source, Main, Java, Com, Example, and then Exploring Android Studio folder, I can see my main activity.kt file. And similarly, you can access it here in your Android Studio Projects window. But then again, if you have a hard time locating the currently open file, just click on this button. So depending on your current situation during the course of your app development, you can switch between these two views, the project view and the Android view. Typically, when designing your user interface, you would want to maximize your screen's working area. You can collapse or hide this project window by clicking this minus button. This puts your project window in this tool window bar that runs around the outer side of the IDE window together with other buttons that allow you to expand or collapse individual tool windows as well. We'll use these tool windows as we progress throughout the duration of this course, such as the resource manager tool window, which allows you to import, create, and manage resources in your app. The lagcat window lets you see system messages and custom messages that you will be adding in your app. These messages will be printed when your application runs. We'll use this when we trace our running application. You can hide, float, and rearrange these different windows as you want to. I'll click Remove this project window from the sidebar. And as you can see, it's now gone. And just in case you mess things up and you don't know how to put it back where it originally resides, after you remove or rearrange certain windows, you can simply navigate to the Windows menu and select Restore Default Layout. And again, I can see my project window here where it is originally placed. One area that you might want to consider exploring as well is your Android Studio settings. To access it, go to the File menu and select Settings. The Settings dialog window appear and these are organized based on appearance and behavior, key map, editor, plugins, and so on. Under the appearance, you can see the current theme I am using. You have initially set this one during your Android Studio installation process. You can change this anytime as you wish. And under the system settings, you'll then again see the Android SDK manager that you previously encountered when setting up your IDE. Under the editor, and then general settings, I'll enable this checkbox to configure my editor's font size to change as I press the control key and scroll on my mouse wheel. I am doing this because eventually, when we discuss code, I can easily zoom in and zoom out on the editor's font size for you to see clearly. You can also select the font and change the default size here, which is 13, kinda small for me so I've put here 18. There are plenty of other settings that you can configure, and I encourage you to explore it on your own if you have time. Majority of these settings might not make sense to you as of this moment, but we'll discuss some of this along the way during the course of our app development. For now, familiarize yourself first with the basics of Android Studio environment, as this will enhance your productivity when building your Android apps. Up next, we'll start designing your Android app's user interface, 
using the XML layout and Kotlin. And again, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joe Edgo and hope to see you in the next video lecture.